traffic jam. Traffic jam. I put it here. I don't know at all. I've got, I've got another speech at, uh, at 9.45. I've got to get over there. Yeah. Here you go. How you do, sir? Well, pretty good. I'll post my kidney. I smell the coffee back there and took off. How you doing? Right. Good to see you. Back to the wall. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. I should have went light on you. I thought you were too. <laughs> well, I got you. I struck that out. I yeah. Well, you, you, I, was, I was just having some fun, but I wasn't intentional. <laughs> hey, you know, well, did you find time? Oh, you never know. Oh, I had a few other things. They felt like a little earlier. It's really good. Good morning, James. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. I could almost come up with a really corny line from a lot of B-movies. I know you're all wondering why we asked you here. <laughs> but uh, I was going to show bedtime for Bonzo. I decided instead we'd talk a little business here. This noon, I'm addressing the Organization of American States and going to state a new foreign policy. And it very definitely is going to require all of your cooperation and help. And let me just background, if I could, for a few minutes, and then I'm going to turn it over to some others for some more thorough briefing and your discussion of various points and the things that you will want to know specifically about the plan. I have long had a, a dream based on the fact that we don't ever seem to have brought, no matter what our efforts have been, all the American states, North and South America, <coughs> together in the kind of accord that we could have, and what a great power we are, as I told a few already, that more than 600, 000, 600 million in population, virtually everything in the line of resources that all of us need in the world, and yet we have probably been more estranged uh, from our own neighbors. A kind of an uneasy, uh, it's a peace and a truce, but a mistrust. And maybe part of it due in the past that we were always the big colossus of the North. So. Early on, and even before I was here, I had in mind approaching our immediate North American neighbors, North and South, and not approaching them with a plan and saying, here, uh, here's something we think is fine, but approaching them and saying, what are your ideas? How can we uh, have a closer and a better relationship? How can we make our borders uh, more of a meeting place than a, a separation? And so, I did contact President Lopez Portillo. We had several meetings, then meetings uh, with Pierre Trudeau in Canada. And out of all of those has come an accord and has come, I think, a better relationship recognized <coughs> on both sides of each border than we've ever had before. And early in my administration, Prime Minister Siaga came here from Jamaica. He had just been elected and it was really one of the rare and few times that someone of a different ideology had actually been voted out of office and the people after experiencing uh, that system of regimentation had turned back to the private sector. But his country economically was in a shambles. We set up a task force of private citizens, also uh, augmented by aid from us. And the first thing you know, we found that we had help again from the other two neighbors, and even from overseas, Japan contributed direct contribution of aid, and uh, slowly, Jamaica is making progress now and coming back on a free <coughs> economy basis. But out of that came this idea of a Caribbean Basin Plan, and the idea that our allies out there, this is of vital importance to us, the Caribbean and those uh, couple of dozen odd size or small nations whose standard of living and economy has been such that they're fertile fields for subversion from outside, uh, for the kind of takeover that we've seen happen in Grenada, 
There are a couple of others that are directly threatened now, and of course this is true in Central America as well. The idea of the Caribbean Basin Plan, and we involved Canada and Mexico, and then Venezuela volunteered <coughs> to join us to see if in a combination of aid, direct aid, but mainly the stimulation of their economy, technical help to go in and see what potentials they had that could provide their people with a better living, erase the social and economic uh, inequities that made them subject to subversion. And Canada has now doubled its contribution to the Caribbean. Mexico and Venezuela have, uh, are helping with a very concessionary low price on a oil that they're furnishing to provide energy for those countries. And I will be presenting to you for this speech today a program in which we will call, yes, for some aid. But it will not be the primary source. We will also turn to the private sector for the same kind of technical aid, uh, hope to stimulate their economy, tax incentives to encourage investment, free trade zone to encourage them, at the same time that we're going to uh, recognize our own uh, two groups out there, Puerto Rico and, and the Virgin Islands, and make sure that this does not become unfair competition to them, so that they will be included uh, also in the things that we're trying to do. Well, this basically is the plan. Uh, I think there may, there may be and will be some immediate cost to it, and that's hard to say at these times of our own economic distress. But I think it's going to be far less cost than if we go along and someday recognize that the Caribbean is becoming more and more a red lake and that we have threats uh, to our own borders. And <coughs> the added cost of one of the things that I used as an example in first talking about this, there's a tremendous cost to our country. We are the focus and the destination of those who are driven by want and need from their own countries and take to the boats while they wind up here. And uh, wouldn't we be far better off with regard to the very costly Haitian program that we have now, both of intercept and then of trying to uh, care for the, those people that come here, <coughs> if we set their economy up to the place that they don't have to leave to make a living, they can make a living uh, staying in their, own, in their own lands, which I think they would prefer. So this basically is the reason for our coming together today. I'm not going to go on at any greater length other than to just close by saying that just ask you to envision that map of the Western Half Hemisphere and envision it, those two great land masses and all those more than 600 million people and all of this Western Hemisphere which has such a common heritage, freedom and independence in an accord in which, yes, we all retain our own customs and culture, uh, we, our sovereignty as nations, but that we are <coughs> bound together here in a determination to preserve what brought us all here in the first place. And uh, I think we could see that it could be a beacon of hope for the entire world. So now I'm going to turn the meeting over to National Security Advisor Judge Clark, and uh, there are others here who will then brief and I know be able to take your questions on specifics of this plan. Bill? Thank you, Mr. President. Well, the President gets back to schedule.